We go over now to uh, Buja Studios, that city host, the forum actually. Well, Marilyn Oka joins us. She's the Deputy Director of Public Relations of the DSS. Marilyn, I thank you for joining us today on the program. What should we look forward to, security-wise, on World Economy Forum Africa? Uh, Chamberlain, good morning. It's been a rainy day in Abuja, but we thank God all the same. Um, we just want to keep enlightening and trying to bring to date the Nigerian people on what we expect them to do during this period. Go ahead. We are saying that if someone has the capability to buy a phone, he should also be able to recharge the phone. A situation where somebody comes to you and say, can I borrow your phone to make a call? We want that to stop. Why? Now, we should not also give out our bank account details for payment of money or transfers of money into them, no matter the reward we are promised. Uh, let, let, let me backtrack a little bit. I mean, the part where he talks about not giving out your phones, uh, you know, to someone to make a call. Any particular case why you think that should not happen? Yes, of course, because you know that the um, investigation is ongoing onto uh, some of the security challenges we've had in the past. And some of the people we've been able to pick up and we are talking to, uh, we discover that... Um, they refuse using their own phones and maybe out of the gullibility of their own neighbors who believe that you must be your neighbor's keeper, they use their phones to make all sorts of calls. You're talking about this in relation with, is it strangers or is it that you can't give your phone to your relatives or your friends? If someone says, hey, I run out of credit, please, would you kindly let me use your phone? Uh, are these things yeah, that we cannot do? Somebody, if somebody can own a phone, then it should never run out of credit. Yes. Because I'm sure, uh, the, uh, I'm sure the service providers have made it you know, very, very possible for you to even buy one, one Naira or two Naira or three Naira credit as you, know, you have the capability. What about movement, movement-wise? Uh, because, I mean, yesterday the president was talking about uh, public institutions, uh, appealing to them to see how they could just uh, stay indoors, maybe not open. What do we expect about that uh, directive or advice, if you will? Um, well, um, I wouldn't want to stand in here for the secretary to the government of the federation. Mine is to come and begin to talk to Nigerians on the need for them to be more conscious. But I know that on Friday, and the president also, you know, highlighted some of the reasons why he feels that um, most people must stay at home, you know, because uh, we are going to have very top uh, government officials from other countries coming in, and there's going to be huge traffic, you know. Uh, so I wouldn't come here and begin to want to discuss what the president of the Federal Republic has already discussed. But mine is to bring people to par with what we expect them to do. And so if you permit me, let me just go on and talk. Well, anyway, I think uh, you can go on. Uh, but again, uh, perhaps uh, one other thing that people would love to know is uh, in all of this uh, conduct, attitude, and culture that you would want them to get, they still would want to know if uh, you have any phone line, that uh, a dedicated phone line that will be available for them during this period and even beyond. Uh, to share information uh, with the services, with the service rather. We have always given out these phone lines, and I think even this morning when I came in here, I made those lines available. We are saying that if people have to come to your home during this period, or even after this period, maybe they, say, they claim they are on essential services, you must demand to see the identity cards. Or you see people in uniform, maybe the military or even the DSS that wears uniform, you must insist on seeing their identity card before you let them into your homes or your business premises. We are also saying that 
You should look out for new and sudden faces, new faces that appear within your environment. We have also discovered that um, most, of, most people now come up with sudden business concerns. You know, it, it, I wouldn't want to mention the particular place where um, all of a sudden before the neighborhood woke up the next morning, somebody had placed a table with an umbrella and was selling um, recharge cards unknown to them that the person was carrying out surveillance you know, for terrorist activities within that um, neighborhood. We are also saying that you should look out and monitor the activities of scavengers, those who pick up things from our dustbins. You must challenge them and insist to know why they are picking up these items from the dustbins. Now, it's a whole range of things that people have to look out for, things that hitherto they never did, you know, they took for granted. For instance, the activities of scavengers, which you usually see on rubbish heaps. Sometimes, uh, I, I know that in some areas they have been prohibited from coming to people's homes, but, you know, we, it depends on the area that you live. But it would seem that we have to be suspicious of a lot of things now. So far, so good. Since you released the hotlines that you have, how would you rate the kind of calls that you're getting? Are these part of the things that people are looking out for? Or out of your investigations, these are things that you now want people to begin to look out for? Out of our investigation, and even before now, these are things that we've insisted that Nigerians have to look out for. But even if it means that we have to come here on a daily basis, if you allow us to do that, then we must begin to drum it down. That look, some of these things we overlook, it is because people who look at our simplicity, have exploited it against our own collective interests. So we must begin to do them and do them very well. You know, for example, you ask Maokwe that can you stop a relative from using your phone? Yes, because sometimes when you give your relative this phone, you are not going to be around there to know what focus or what his conversation is on because he expects some level of privacy. But I am saying that for somebody who owns a phone, you don't need a phone if you can't recharge the phone. It's like you're going to get married when you know you don't have the resources to be able to take care of maybe a wife or a family. Or people go buy cars. Or uh, there is a particular case where somebody says he claims he sold a car without proper documentation. Of course, it's not true. If you have to sell a car, the they, 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 they drive there should not be the money you're making. But you should be able to go through the process of uh, documentation, that is change of ownership and all that. So if you are caught either selling a car without proper documentation, or you are caught maybe because you want to be a good Muslim or a good Christian, giving out your phone to be used by people when you cannot monitor such conversations, or you are caught giving out your um, bank account details for money to be transferred or paid in by anybody, of course, you are liable. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse.